So, wow. They got the technical replacement for Eli Apple and Trey Flowers. Well, the immediate replacement. Because could they still bring back Trey Flowers and Eli Apple? It's very possible. My guess is most likely they're not going to. They're going to save the money. They got Sidney Jones here in a one-year contract. Then they're going to move on in the NFL draft, pick up somebody in the draft, right, and kind of move on in that way. Now, um, it was a one-year contract they got Sidney Jones for. I'm not sure how long or how much money it was. Um, all I know is that it's just a one-year contract. So not much information has came out on the actual money of the contract. Um, it just says I agreed to a one-year contract. And yeah, so he's going to be a guy who's going to replace Eli Apple or replace, um, what's it called? Uh, Trey Flowers. Now, could technically speaking, could he come in and then end up becoming just, you know, a rotational guy and you bring back maybe Trey Flowers or Eli Apple? Uh, very possible. You know, you could have this as more or less like, listen, last season we lost Shido, right? So you kind of want to have more like a death piece of anything. It's a one-year contract, so this is not a contract where you're you're getting in because you're like, listen, that's the future. That's the future guy. This is more or less like a prove-it deal. It's like a prove-it deal of, listen, you know, we need depth of this position. And if you come in, you absolutely just wow us away, play awesome football, then you can become, you know, it will give you a longer term contract in the future. But who is Sidney Jones? Sidney Jones is a former second round pick of the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Sidney Jones played f three of his seasons with the Cincinnati, uh, with the Cincinnati, with the Philadelphia Eagles, where he had two interceptions, but only played a total, actually only started a total of eight games and played a total of 21 games. He then went to Jacksonville, where he started uh, six games and only played nine games. Then, in 2021, he went to Seattle, where he only spent half the season in Seattle. Actually, no, he put the whole season in Seattle, and in 2022, it was kind of mix and match. He played 16 games, started 11 games. Uh, 2022, he played for the Rams, and he also played for the Seahawks, where he started uh, two games and played 10 games. So, this is... If anything, now looking at even more, a completely just a depth piece. Um, if anything, I would say this might not even be a you know replacement for Eli Apple or, or Eli um, Eli Apple or um, Trey Flowers. It is definitely a player that they would like to be able to use him as you know a possible depth piece in the or sorry as a possible placement in the future. But for right now, this is if anything just a player. Hey, listen. We have a position hole at this play at this position. We have a hole at this position. We're gonna look for this in the draft. We're gonna look, you know, to keep talking to Trey Flowers, keep talking to Eli Apple, possibly bring one of those guys back. But we did see that Trey Flowers met with Atlanta, so we're just interested more right now as a depth piece. He is 27 years old, so he's not, you know, the youngest guy of all time. But he's nothing crazy special where you know you're looking at you like, oh. We're doing something here. But this guy is a guy who, you know, you bring him in, see what he can do, and you got him a, you most likely got him a league minimum. You got nothing guaranteed to the guy. So if he absolutely stinks up the bed, he's not making the team. It's kind of like Cody Ford. He's not making the team if he stinks up the bed. So um, let's talk about Sidney Jones. Sidney Jones, in his small sample size, because, again, he has not played too much in the NFL, is a 51.3 overall grade, a 74.6 run defense grade, and a 63 pass uh, rush grade. He has a 44.6 coverage grade, which, again, it's, like, so weird to say this because when you have a player who has a whole body of worth, a work, and then you can kind of see the grades and be like, oh, he really struggles here, or he's good here, or he has value here. Oh, God, this is awful. But when you have a player who is like him who has not played that much in the NFL, it's hard to really judge him so I'd say, oh, yeah, this guy is awful at this said thing, or, you know, he's going to be a liability here because, like, at the end of the day, he hasn't played much, you know? You don't really have too much to work with to say that he is good or bad, right? Now, again, this could be a great signing. In the end of the day, this could be an amazing signing because you bring him in, he's, again, a 
like we've said many times, an unproven player, right? You have Nick Scott. You bring in Nick Scott. He had the last two seasons, he's become a starter, but he's still not, you know, a household name yet, right? You bring in guys that might not be household name yet, and you let Lou kind of go to work, right? Let the mad scientist cook it up a little bit. And who knows, maybe he ends up taking this guy and propelling his future even crazier and amazing her, right? And usually what you do here is, it'll say, for example, next season, this guy starts playing good, has a couple interceptions, maybe he's a good rotational piece. You then sign him to a three-year contract for little money so that you can kind of get him, you know, on the Bengals who they nation train uh, ride for as long as humanly possible if he does end up working out. Again, like I said, it, my personal opinion right now is this is, listen, we have a hole in that position. We want to draft this position. So here's a guy we're going to just plug and play right now. And... Uh, this might also, again, like I said, I'm not going to completely speculate here, but this might speak volumes to the whole Trey Flowers and Eli Apple conversation. Maybe they're not figuring out a way on both sides. Maybe they're not working out what they want to work out. Maybe Eli wants too much. Maybe the Bengals just don't want him. Maybe Trey Flowers wants too much. My guess is Trey Flowers probably is the guy who wants too much. But um, nonetheless, though, it just seems like that that those sides might not be working out. So, I I like this signing. I don't think it's a bad signing. I think overall wise, it is nice to see them. You know, kind of fill a hole that needs to be filled here, where it's not like okay, well, this is the you know you're breaking bank or you're going out there and making a huge splash play, but you're really just you know taking care of position you need to take care of. So, um. I would like this signing actually better than the, like the Cody Ford signing, surprisingly enough. The Cody Ford signing wasn't bad. It's just that, you know, this signing I feel like, you know, gives me more happiness to think that there's a chance this guy could become something. Cody Ford's nothing. Cody Ford's a backup, and I don't really trust him to be a starter, and I wouldn't trust him with number nine back there to block for number nine. You know, if Sidney Jones messes up, if, if Cody Ford messes up, number nine could have his career done. If... Uh, Sidney Jones messes up, you cut him. You know, he messed up a coverage or whatever. And keep in mind, a lot of these guys, whether it's Cody Ford or it's Sidney Jones, most likely a lot of these guys might not even make the roster, right? Now, because we talk about these signings, and I think there was, I forget who said it. There was some analyst who said it, who's actually really uh, a smart take, which, you know, I don't really like analysts too much when it comes to smart takes. But he said that, you know, a lot of these guys that team signed in, you know, March and April... You don't remember about them. You don't remember about them at all. And then you get to the preseason, and you kind of forget that the team signed that player because they're not a big name. They're not a crazy name. A lot of times, these players have not guaranteed contracts. They have small contracts. And a lot of times, because of that, you know, when you get to the actual season, some of these players just don't make the team. They just get cut before the team even starts. And then you're like... Oh, remember when we talked about Sidney Jones? Back? I'm not saying this is going to be Sidney Jones. But, you know, remember when we talked about Sidney Jones and how, like, we signed him? <laughs> Not, nothing. And this is, uh, the Ravens have someone with Nelson Aguilar we just signed. He might not even make the roster, right? And then they don't make the roster, and then you kind of move on with your life. But with that being said, I think right now, if they do not find a guy in the draft that they like, and my guess is how this is going to work out is like this, right? They're going to continue to try to bring back Eli Apple and Trey Flowers. But it might not work, right? So you bring in Sidney Jones, right? You have s probably six or seven players in the draft in the first in the, in the seven rounds that you like. You say, okay, listen. We're going to use, in our, if everything works out, a fourth or fifth round pick on the cornerback in the draft, right? We like this guy. We like that guy. Whatever. We're bringing him in. Sidney Jones is an insurance policy. You know, he's on the roster. He would have a depth piece on the roster. If we we draft A in the draft, we bring him in, we play the preseason, the three games, and Sidney Jones is out playing A, no big deal. A remains on our practice squad. We move A to our practice squad, and you know what? Sidney Jones is playing good. Sidney Jones has the job. If Sidney Jones is not playing good, we cut Sidney Jones, bring in A. Now A is our uh, on our starting roster. And if A starts to continue to play good, let's say he's just mediocre, 
Then we're looking down the line for other free agents or other players we could possibly bring in. And at the time, let's say, you know, you're going to the season. Eli Apple or Trey Flower still hasn't signed with anyone. He's still kind of, you know, dodging with the Bengals. Then you just say, hey, listen, Trey, Eli, we love you. If you want to come back, here's our offer. You give them one last offer and you walk away and you close the door. It doesn't mean you're saying you, they can't sign with you. You're saying, listen, that's the offer. We're not negotiating anymore. You walk away. Drops the mic. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.